Hi YouTube. Um, right, I'm going to do um, a video this evening about the moon. Okay, now, funnily enough, my first video I ever did when I started my channel was entitled The Moon Isn't Right. And um, surprisingly, it was my first video, and it's like one of the most viewed videos that I've ever done. And hey, my, my videos aren't viewed like some people's videos are on YouTube. Some people get like millions of views. Um, <laughs> I'm a small fish. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a, oh, hang on, I got a text message. Look at this, this. Right in the middle of a video, that's not good. Okay. Right, 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 cool. Right. Now, um, this video, The Moon Isn't Right, it was my own personal observation of the moon that's turned out to be confirmed by many, many people that have watched my video. Um, I'm not the only one who's noticed that the moon's been behaving rather strange. Um, it has, and, and, and it still is from time to time, but at the time I did the video, it was doing all kinds of crazy things, but anyway. Um, now, this video also is about the moon, but this is not any current news. I mean, most of my videos is like current news that's going on, just my thoughts and feedback on current world affairs. But, um, yeah, no, this is old information. This is nothing new. So to some of you watching this video, this is going to be like, oh, yeah, I, I know all this already, you know, uh, especially those of you who are in the truth movement. Um, but uh, there's going to be some of you watching this video, and the information that I'm going to tell you about um, with regards to the moon is going to astound you. It's going to blow you away. I, and actually, I can't tell you everything that I want to say in this one video. So there's going to be more videos to follow. I can only make a start right now. Um, now, it's not my own work. It's not my own research. Um, I'm actually referring, and I'm going to be reading quotes from this book here. It's called Human Rights Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More. I nearly said The Lion Sleeps Tonight. I've got that song in my head. You know, that, that jungle song. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's written by David Icke, who, yes, is controversial. Um, you know, put your preconceived ideas aside. I happen to like David Icke. Um, I know he's um, controversial, but the information I'm going to give you is based on fact, right? There, there really isn't any speculation. It's, it's, all, it's all fact, but the fact gives birth to a hell of a lot of speculation, but I'll leave the speculating up to you, okay? I have my own speculations. You'll have your own speculations. In fact, the information that I'm going to be um, talking about in this video, it could, I, I could entitle the, the video something rather fancy, like 100% proof of the existence of a creator God, or 100% proof of the existence of aliens, um, or to be a little more vague, 100% proof of the existence of some intelligent force higher than us humans. Um, I could entitle the video that. I don't know what I'm going to title the videos. I haven't recorded it yet, and I'll decide when I'm uploading it. But um, you'll see why I say these things in a moment. Now I'm going to make a start, and like I say, there's going to be more videos to come because there has to be. There's no way I can get all the information out. But what I'm going to start with, I'm just getting warmed up, right? Because um, there's like as I go on and as the videos go on, they're going to get more and more astounding and more and more exciting. Um, so let's just get into it then. Now, first of all, this information that I'm about to share with you, um, I actually initially came across this information in a different book, um, a book entitled "Who Built the Moon." Um, and uh, who was that written by? Let me see, for those of you who want to buy the book. Uh, written by uh, Christopher Knight and Alan Butler, co-authors. Okay. And uh, I was astounded. I thought, flip me. That's amazing. Um, now, David Dyke, in his book, he refers to that book as well, because he read that book. And it was that book that initiated him on his research regarding the moon. Now, so two things then, let's get right into it. Two things in this video, in part one, with regards to the moon that's kind of strange, right? The, the first thing, I'll just tell you the two things and then we'll get into them individually. The first thing is that the moon is unusually large. It shouldn't be as large as it is, right? It's unnatural. 
Okay, that's number one. And number two, the extraordinary coincidences, mathematical coincidences regarding the moon and it's actually regarding the sun, earth and moon. The way, in other words, the position of the moon in relation to the earth and the sun um, and the strange uncanny synchronicities regarding it. Okay, now more on that in a minute. So let's then first of all let's start off with the size of the moon. Okay, um, just gonna read a couple of quotes. Um, right, Erwin Shaparo from the Harvard Smithsonian, sorry Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics said the best explanation for the moon is observational error. The moon doesn't exist. Knight and Butler write, I quote. The moon is bigger than it should be, apparently older than it should be, and much lighter in mass than it should be. It occupies an unlikely orbit and is so extraordinary that it that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties and none of them could be considered remotely watertight. Okay, now before I move on to the next quote, um, let me ask you a question. With regards to the origin of the moon, what have you been taught in your education um, with regards to the moon's origin? Now, I know, per well, I think, based on what I know, that there are two mainstream explanations as to the moon. Um, number one is that the moon came from the earth um, and it's the double whack theory or the whack theory okay, um, that this is based upon whereby a Mars sized planet smacked into the earth and out popped the moon from the earth okay hmm now the double whack theory is the whack theory getting desperate because when it didn't stand up scientifically they, they called it the, uh, the the double big whack which is where um, the, the, the Mars like planet came round for a second go, you know, a second impact on the Earth. Okay. Um, now that's one theory. Now the, the mainstream theory. Now um, yeah. I'll tell you why it doesn't stand up in a second, but before I do, let me just um, tell you the second theory with regards to the moon, is that the moon just kind of wandered into our gravitational field, our gravitational influence. It just kind of came about and, you know, it now orbits us because we have it in our orbital, uh, sorry, in our gravitational field, right? Okay, now first of all, the fact that the moon came from the earth really doesn't make sense because there are rocks on the moon that are older than the rocks on the earth, okay? The rocks on the moon are about a billion years older than the supposed age of the earth. Now the dust that the rocks sit on, on the moon, are about a billion years older than that, okay? So evidently the moon is far older than the earth. So it doesn't make sense then that the moon came from the earth, when there's not a single rock on the earth that is dated to be as old, okay? Now then, the fact that the um, moon possibly just kind of came about and, and came close enough to the Earth that it's now become a satellite of the Earth, that doesn't stand up for another reason. And we're talking about the, um, the mathematical odds of that happening according to the uh, mathematical synchronicities, which I'll go into in a second. But let's just kind of backtrack, let's go back to the size of the moon, right? Now let me just read another quote, right? Another little snippet from here. How much time have we got? Okay, five minutes, not long. Okay, Isaac 
um, Asimov, a Russian professor of biochemistry and writer of popular science books, said that the moon has no atmosphere and no magnetic field. It basically is a freak of nature in that the Earth is the only planet in the solar system orbited by a satellite so enormous in relation to the world it circles. It is bigger than the planet Pluto. Some scientists have even called it a twin planet system rather than a planet and a satellite. Asimov said that by all cosmic laws the moon should not be orbiting Earth. He went on, and I quote, We cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon by rights ought not to be there. The fact that it is, is one of those strokes of luck almost too good to accept some, sorry, almost too good to accept. Small planets such as Earth with weak gravitational fields might well lack satellites. In general then, when a planet does have satellites, those satellites are much smaller than the planet itself. Therefore, if the Earth has a satellite, there would be every reason to suspect that at best it would be a tiny world, perhaps 30 miles in diameter. But that is not so. Earth not only has a satellite, but it is a giant satellite. 2,160 miles in diameter. How is it then that tiny Earth has one? Amazing, is what it says. Now, the book then goes on to talk about the uh, mass cons, which is mass concentrations. Now, we'll get into that a bit more in one of my videos that is to follow um, regarding the moon. I'm going to be talking about evidence that the moon is hollow, okay, because um, Incidentally, the, the, the moon's mass is not right. It's like there's little pockets of denser mass um, in various places on the moon. It's not evenly spread out. It's like denser places. It's, it's very strange. They call those mass cones. Um, okay. And then the book goes on to talk about the things that I was talking about a second ago. The fact that, um, you know, the rocks on the moon, um, how they've been... Uh, uh, dated um, to be older than the Earth. Um, okay, so it goes into this uh, this big whack theory. Okay, right. Okay, let me just read a quote here. Now it says here. Um, right, the truth is that they have no idea where the moon came from or how it came to be where it is. Earl Ubell, a former science editor with CBS, asked. If the Earth and Moon were created at the same time, near each other, why has one got all the iron and the other, the Moon, not much? The differences suggest that Earth and Moon came into being far from each other, an idea that stumbles over the inability of astrophysicists to explain how exactly the moon became a satellite of Earth. So to sum up in a sentence, the fact that the moon is the Earth's satellite is a mystery. Scientists just don't get it. Now, I don't have time to talk about my second point that I hope is probably because I waffle. Um, I do do that, I know I do. Um, but anyway, I want, I'm gonna do a part two right away and it's going to be with regards to the um, extraordinary coincidences regarding the moon, and this is this was going to be my second my second point, but I have to do it in the next video. So be sure to watch the next video, part two, um, with regards to the moon. It's going to be a part three, four, five, and six probably um, over the course of the next several days. Um, but yeah, if, if this is new information to you, you'll find it astounding. Thank you.